The Bible talks about resisting the devil and he will flee from us. But how can we resist the devil when we're made of flesh and blood? How can we fight against such an evil and powerful force? Well, there's power in the name of Jesus. And I'd like to share a story told by Pastor Lee Venden about the power of Jesus. I have a friend, I told you about him earlier in the week, named Steve Mackey. Uh, when I first met him, he had just taken the World Heavyweight Kickboxing Championship or Shoot Boxing Championship, as it's sometimes referred to, in Tokyo, Japan, in the Tokyo Dome on international satellite television. And uh, when I met him, um, <clears throat> he asked me, what, do I, what, what did I do for a living? I told him I uh, had the privilege of helping people become better friends of Jesus. He said, how can you do that? And I talked to him about taking time daily in the Word of God for the purpose of meeting Jesus there. And I told him about this three-legged stool that we were talking about just a moment ago. And he said, I'd like to have that kind of friendship if it was even possible, so I'll give it a go. And he bought a Bible and he began reading to know Jesus. And Jesus did the thing that Jesus promised he would do. If I'm lifted up, I'll draw you to myself. We've been talking about that all week, so I'm not going to kind of like just kind of repeat those things just now. But I want to tell you a story that happened on an October 31st. Uh, Steve Mackey and his family, his wife and little boy, they became members of our congregation and he became our youth director of our, of our church there. But Margie said, why don't we have the Mackeys over for lunch after church and then we can spend the afternoon together. So we invited him and they accepted and it happened to be October 31st. And so after we'd had a wonderful meal, we spent the afternoon just in, in, in uh, sharing together and then around the, about the time the sun was going down, the phone rang. So I went over to the phone and I said, hello, this is, this is Lee Benden. And there was a voice on the other end that I recognized. It was a woman's voice. She was about 33, 34 years old. And she had come to see me a couple of times earlier. Um, and the reason was that her parents were Satanists. Her father considered himself a warlock. Her mother considered herself a witch. And they had raised her in the first church of Satan ever since she was a baby. She was born into the first church of Satan. She'd been a victim of all kinds of ritual, satanic abuse, and all kinds of other stuff that had gone on in her life. Now she's in her mid-30s, and she wants out. Um, they have a Bible called the Satanic Bible. They have the Satanic Ten Commandments, which are all the opposite of God's Ten Commandments. And anyway, she was like, I have enough of this religion of my parents. And she looked up a pastor in the phone book, just randomly looked through churches and church pastors. She put her finger down, boom, calls me and asks if she could have an appointment. She comes to my office. She tells me about this background that she comes from. And then she says, is there any way I can get free of Satan and all of that stuff? And I said, you know what? It says in this book, if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. And she said, so how does that work? So I began talking to her about this three-legged stool we've been talking about all week. I guess I'll just say it one more time. Um, this represents a relationship with Jesus. And the legs of the stool represent the things we do to nurture, develop, grow, or maintain a relationship with Jesus on a daily basis. The first leg of the stool is Bible study for the purpose of getting to know him, that kind of Bible study, as opposed to other kind, that kind. Reading to know Jesus. The second leg of the stool is prayer, but because it's a relationship stool, it's not prayer to get answers. It's not prayer to claim promises. It's not prayer for emergency 911 phone calls. It's prayer to commune with him as one would commune with a friend. That's a relationship kind of thing. The third leg of the stool is sharing with others the good things you're discovering about the friend you have in Jesus. And as you spill over to them, they get more excited about your friend and you make room for fresh water of life to keep you from growing stagnant. Okay, so I explained that to this girl, and she began spending time with Jesus daily. She began coming to our church, and wonderful things began happening. But now it's her voice on the phone, and she says, Pastor Benny, would you please come to my house as soon as possible and pray for me? The devil has told me he's going to kill me tonight, and he's not fooling. And then this girl lived by herself. And then... All of a sudden, the voice on the other end of the phone changed. I'm not going to try and imitate it. I couldn't. But it was very deep. It was growly, snarly, guttural, bassish, wolfish kind of a voice. It would be like a wolf trying to speak English while cursing. Uh, that's the best I can describe. It was hideous. It was so unnerving that all the hair in the back of my neck began to bristle, and I felt chills go down my spine. The voice did these words. She's all mine. You can't have her. Don't pray for her. Don't talk to Jesus about her. She belongs to me. She's all mine. And then the voice ended as the phone hung up. Click. 
And I remember thinking to myself, why did I ever sign up to be a pastor? <laughs> Last place in the world I want to go is a visit to this one right now. And I remember thinking, oh, my, my body was just going nuts. My, my chills going up and down my spine. My stomach was doing flip-flops. I could feel the color draining from my face. My legs felt weak in the knee. I turned around terrified. And then I saw, sitting in our living room, the world heavyweight kickboxing champion. <laughs> and I said, yo, Steve, how would you like to go meet the devil? I'm not going to tell you exactly what Steve said because he was a new Christian and, and the words he used weren't always what you might call King James English. And <laughs> I'll give you kind of a paraphrase of what he said. He said something kind of like this. He said, yeah, I'd love to kick his behind. That's about as close as I'm going to get to what he really said. Um, I said, one thing for sure, Steve, you and I are not going to kick his behind, but I'd love to have someone else come and pray with me. He said, you got it, Rev. <laughs> I said, bring your sword. He said, sword? I said, yeah, I held up my Bible. Oh, he said, right on, Rev, and got his Bible. We got in the car, we drove to this woman's house. When we got there, we pulled into the driveway. Every light on the outside of her house was off, and it appeared that every light on the inside of her house was off as well. It was very dark. And as we pulled in, I said, Steve, before we get out of the car, I want to say another prayer. So I said, Lord Jesus, we're not here because we think we're exorcists. We're here because one of your friends is asking for prayer and we're here to pray. I happen to know, Lord Jesus, I am no match for the devil, but I also know that he is no match for you. So would you please go in before we do and you deal with him because I know we can't. And then I said, amen. And the world heavyweight kickboxing champion said, so may it ever be. <laughs> and we got out of the car and we approached the front door. I knocked on the door, nobody answered. I rang the doorbell, nobody answered. I tried turning the doorknob, it was unlocked. And I thought, oh no, I don't want to go in here. I opened the door and pushed. The door kind of creaked open and I looked in, there was nothing, there was just dark in there. And I'm thinking to myself, she said, the devil said he was going to kill me tonight and he wasn't fooling. So if we go in there, what if he has already done that? And what if the way he did it was so gruesome and so horrific that once I see it, I will never get it out of my head for the rest of my life. I didn't want to go in there. I called the girl's name. There was no answer. So I stepped inside the door and I reached for the first lights which I could find and flipped it on. I called her name again. I saw nobody. I walked farther, turned on the next light and the next light. I kept going further and farther in. Meanwhile, the world heavyweight kickboxing champion was going like this. We finally found her. She was lying in a fetal position in a back room on the floor, but she didn't seem to be injured. So I jumped, kind of nudged her shoulder and I said, this is Pastor Vend and you called and asked us to pray. I said, I brought another church member with me and we're here to pray for you. And she opened her eyes and she said, oh, thanks. I said, listen, could we maybe go into your little living room there and sit in those chairs? And she said, yes. And so I helped her to her feet and we went in and there was a couch. I kind of helped seat her at one end of the couch and then I went as far away as I could get from her on the other end of the couch. And, and Steve Mackey, he sat in this swivel rocker, kind of a barrel chair over here to one side. So we're kind of like that. And then I said to her, uh, we're here because you asked for prayer. And um, so that's what we're going to do. And no sooner did I say those words and the same voice I had heard over the phone began to speak from her end of the couch. Her mouth didn't move, her lips didn't move. But the same voice was speaking and it said, she's all mine. I told you she belongs to me. You can't have her. Don't pray for her. Don't talk to Jesus about her. Snarl, snarl, growl, growl, curse, curse. She's all mine. And I started singing. J -j -j Jesus loves me. This I know. I looked over at the world heavyweight kickboxing champion and he said, for the Bible tells me so. And we started praying for her. And I'm excited to be able to tell you that the same Jesus who cast out demons 2,000 years ago, he's still the king. He's still the best. And as we prayed and called on his name, the evil, snarling, growling, cursing, angry voice left the girl, went across the, the room, and then opened the door and slammed it as it left.
boom. I didn't see anything. I just heard it all. Boom. Now, there's more to that story I'm going to leave out. But I'm just going to tell you that I got in the car with Steve after that. And I said, Steve, what would you think of that? And Steve said, when we first sat down, I looked at her. And it felt to me like somebody else was looking through her eyes at me. He said, it felt like a hand reached back at my neck and turned my head like, you're going to look at this. And I couldn't turn my head to the left or the right. And these eyes looking back at me felt like they were eyes peering from a mask and it was somebody else's eyes. And then he said, all of a sudden, I didn't see anything, but I felt what, what I would describe as a heavy hand slam into my chest. And it hit me with so much force that it pressed me against the back of the chair and knocked all the wind out of my lungs. <laughs> And then it held me against the chair and I heard a voice in my ear and it said, so you think you're going to kick my behind, do you? And that's when I started singing, for the Bible tells me so. The reason I tell you that story is because I don't think we are any match for Satan. I don't think we ever will be. So this idea of you and I resisting the devil, you and I striving against sin and Satan, it is ludicrous or it is arrogant. Both of those are not options I'm interested in. We are no match for sin or Satan. We never have been. We never will be. The only way to fight a spirit is to get a bigger spirit to fight for you. And I want to remind you of something we had on our screen earlier this week. God has promised to fight the enemy for us. Isaiah 59, 19 says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God will lift up a standard against him. So who's going to go out and do battle against Satan for you? The spirit of God. He's not asking you to go out and wage war. He's saying, I will take care of this. I just need need you to turn it over to me. Kind of like uh, in wrestling, they sometimes have a thing called tag team wrestling, where two people are fighting against two other people, but they can only fight one at a time. And all of a sudden, if you're in big trouble, you reach over and you tag your partner and he gets in. Well, this is the deal. We don't even try to fight the enemy. We tag the partner. That's what we do. We tag the partner and he comes in and raises up a standard. Now, <clears throat> I want you to underscore something here in your head. I just put it on the screen. God wants to fight sin and Satan for us, and he wants to use the Holy Spirit's power to do that. Underscore that. Put that in the back of your mind like a little, you know, memory gem there. Um, God wants to fight sin and Satan for us. He promises to do that. And so when we encounter evil, when we face temptations, it's not through our mind that we can resist the devil. In fact, if you look at that Bible verse, it talks about submitting yourself to God or humbling yourself to God. It's only through that can we overcome and resist the devil. I uh, hope you gained a blessing, and if you'd like to stay in touch, please subscribe.